the thief cometh. John 10 and 10 says, the thief cometh, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I come that they might have life and they then might have it more abundantly. You see two wills in this little scripture. This one little verse, you see two wills. Somebody say two wills. You see the will of the devil, the thief, and you see the will of God in this one verse. The will of the devil and the will. Keep me right there. That's so nice. All oh, the whole tingle thing. All of it. The will of the devil and the will of God in this one verse. Today when you leave here, you're going to leave here making a choice. Which will will you walk out on? Make it a choice. He's just unraveling right now as I'm talking to you. Which will? And I believe, I know you're going to leave here walking out on the will of God. Two, amen, entities, two people, two personalities are in the text. The thief, who's the thief? And it says, he says, but I, and that they might have, but I am. Who's the other person? Huh? What's his name here? He gave you his name? No, what's his name right here? Thank you. His name is I am. And who's I am? Jesus, right? God, Jesus. So you see, the thief who's Satan, and I am God, Jesus, in the text. And here you see the secrets of the enemy revealed in the first clause of John 10 and 10. Jesus says, the thief, Satan, he come to steal, kill, and destroy. And some people don't get past Braun, the first phase or the first part of John 10 and 10. Their lives don't go past the first part of John 10 and 10. Are you hearing me? Many people stay stuck right there. They get saved, but their whole journey is a journey of being robbed, killed, and destroyed. Dreams destroyed. Anointings destroyed. Ministry destroyed, family destroyed, marriage destroyed, business destroyed, health destroyed. But today, you're going to make a choice. Which will are you going to go out of here on? You say, now, this is the will of the enemy, the will of the devil. To steal, to kill, and destroy. And some, you came in war out, always fighting an enemy who's always trying to steal, kill, and destroy. And you wonder, what is the matter? How can I get past this journey into a realm of victory? And today you leave now to be making that choice. Lord spoke last night and we were preaching, and I want to rehearse or say amen, that, that, that revelation he gave so that you understand Sometimes you feel like, God, when am I ever going to come out? Do you even care, God, that the minute I get something is taken away one way or another? Oh, shine my eyes. But I want to tell you some good news about the fact that he comes to steal, kill, and destroy from me. There's good news even in the first part. How many say, he, amen, there's some things he stole. I'm always going through some ways, dealing, trying to kill, trying to destroy anybody. Because if, if I'm in the wrong house, I'll go down the street and find out the people who I'm supposed to talk to. Stole your joy, stole your salvation. So there's good news in the first part, Pastor Sergeant. Even though it's bad news, it's good news, Elder Brown. Because number one, the thief will only steal from somebody that got something. Ain't nobody going to rob from somebody that's broke. Ain't nobody going to the bum on the street and rob him because he ain't got nothing. So the thief will search out 
what you have yes, and see that you have something that he wants. Yes, so the good news is if you're being attacked, it's because you got something. And if you never bothered by Satan, it's because you ain't got nothing. I can hear nobody. You have potential. You have prophecy. You have capacity. You have anointing. You have ministry. You have a mind. You have intellect. You have love. Oh, you have money. Some Come on, somebody. You have an anointing. You have a dream. You have a purpose. Come on, somebody. Glory. You have God's DNA. And so... He ignores all the folk that have nothing, that don't have anything. And let me tell you, he even, amen, he don't bother some rich people because there's some wealthy people that ain't got nothing. And you say, why, why you don't bother? Why don't you mess with so-and-so? He's a multi-billionaire. All I got is a few hundred dollars in the bank. He said, because he looks and sees beyond a few hundred dollars and you got something. You have the potential to be wealthy and not mess up the money. The good news is is that he comes to steal from somebody that got something. Even if you haven't arrived, you have destiny. That's why he messes with you, Natasia, because Miko, you got destiny. And so he lurks around those who have destiny. He says, I'm going to steal because you got something. So somebody say, Lord, I think I got something. I'm tired of this journey where he's always met. But that means I got something that he won't. Hey, I feel the anointing. And then number two, Jimmy. Number two, mother workman. Bible say he come to kill. So the first thing is, the first phase of your attack, Sonia, the, amen, you got joy, it might be a little joy, but you got joy. So he'll take the little joy you have, amen, hit you with something, Greta, to take the little joy you have. Because if he can take the little joy, he know you won't have no strength. So he'll take the little joy, the whole lot of joy, because the joy of the Lord is your strength. So he'll hit you with something, some kind of event, to steal your joy. Oh, that's what you after. Come on. I started out my morning feeling great. By midday, something hits you. And by night and by nighttime, you're ready to throw in the towel. Go back to morning time. Go back to morning time and grab your joy. Go back to morning time and grab your victory. Number two, mother. He said he come to kill. So he'll, he'll steal. Now, amen. Now that he's stolen and you're empty of whatever he stole and you're lacking, he says, I'm not going to let up. Now I'm going to kill. I'm going to murder. Let's just say it was joy. Let's say it was money. Now I'm going to kill so you never go back to having what I just took from you, what he just took from you. I'm going to kill so you never go back. So some of you, there's some things you came to church and you live light and you know something you lost. It's dead. It's gone. You lost your joy, your hope, your vision, whatever. Whatever it is, it was killed. Well, he reveals something when he tried to kill from you. You're never going to try to kill a dead man. So he just told another thing. That whatever he took and tried to kill is because it had life. Now you need to go back to that. Come on, that thing that's in your life that he killed and tra- trying to kill and murder and shut down. Kill your prophetic voice. Kill your ministry. Kill your family. Kill. It's because he sees life and he's only going to try to kill what has life. So now you got to, hey man, you got to check that thing and say, so this thing that he is trying to kill is valuable. Whatever he's trying to steal is valuable. Come on, somebody. He don't never, hey, if you strung out on drugs, he don't never try to steal the drugs from you. He's like, stay there. Have it. 
He'll never try to steal a drink from you. Want another one? I can hear nobody. Come on, he'll never try to steal. If you're an ungodly relationship, he's never going to try to shut that down. I don't hear nobody. Amen. He's never going to try. If you're an ungodly, he'll be like, here, here's some more. Here's some more. Get more. And you know if you never get no more, you had a? No. You had a what? No. I'm talking about ungodly relationship. Come on, somebody. So, he comes to steal because you have something. He comes to kill because it has life. And so, the life that you have, life to live, life to dream, life to, amen, life, life to do God's will. He wants to kill what has life. And so, some of you today, you're leaving here with your life back. You're leaving here with your life back. I said you're leaving here with your life back. Now, Doris. Some of you in the medical field. That when something dies, when someone dies, mother, you're in the medical field. Now with today's technology, it is possible to die and still live. If you, the man that died, the football player, he died on the football field. But somebody knew CPR. Somebody knew CPR. I can hear nobody. And so though something, someone dies, if you get to them right away, there's CPR or there's some kind of, you know, you can hook them up to life support. So the devil knows that though he may kill and take what lives, he still is a little nervous because if you catch it in time, like Jesus caught Lazarus in time, he died. He died, but there was still hope because there was a word. So the third thing he don't like is after he shut things down and shut your joy down and take what you have and amen, then kills what you have and kill what you dreamed or whatever it is. Though he kills and obstructs, mess things up. He says, wait a minute. Though it's dead, there's still hope. So so why do, you, why do you try to destroy after you already killed? Because to destroy means to blow it up out of oblivion where you never could gather it back. And you're only going to try to destroy something that has hope. I can't hear nobody. So I, I, I said, you're only going to try to destroy something that has hope. Because you already stole. Now you kill. And now you say, after I kill, they still won't stop. They still won't throw in the towel. They still won't walk away from me. They still keep coming to church. They still keep praising God. They still keep praying. They still ask God to wash me. They still ask for repentance. They still press on. They still praise. They still sing. And so he said, I got to destroy you that you never, ever, ever get your life back again. Why? Because you have hope. There's hope of deliverance. There's hope of restoration. There's hope of revival. There's hope of return. There's hope of reconciliation. There's hope of breakthrough. There's hope of multiplicity. There's hope of rising again. There's hope of living again, though it has died. Y'all don't want to say you're going to make me preach. I'm tired. He comes to kill because he sees life. He comes to destroy because there's still hope. Hallelujah. And if he can shatter everything, an airplane that explodes in the air is destroyed. And there's no coming back. So he wants to destroy. Now the contrast of the second part of the verse. Jesus said, I come that they might have life. 
Greek word zoe. Zoe life is everything pertaining to life spiritually, naturally, physically. He said, I come to give life. And amen, on top of salvation life, on top of, amen, new life, abundant, on top of physical life, he said, I give you life. Mother, I give you life and that more abundantly, more abundant life I come to give you. And so the contrast is, or the choice is, what are you going to leave here with? Because he comes to give you Zoe life, which is shalom. <laughs> everything healthy, everything come on healed and made whole. I give you life, abundant life. I give you, I give you Zoe life. I give you God's kind of life. He said, not only do I give you God's kind of life, but I give it to you. Big. So the devil don't have the last say. It would be, it would be sad if the verse ended with the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's sad. No hope. Nothing. You leave us with nothing. Jesus said, hey, that's not the end. There's a coal in there. I come to give you life. Today, I come. The I am come to give you life and that more abundantly. What are you going to leave here with? The God kind of life? Deliverance, breakthrough, hope, dream again? Another yes, Lord? You will leave here. There's two paths today. And I believe you already made the choice through your praise. You already made the choice when you came to the altar. You made your choice. Beloved saints, leave here with the resolve today. But I chose to take on the Zoe life, the God kind of life, and to receive it more abundantly. That's everything you need, everything I want you to have. You're leaving here with everything that God wants you to have. Now, I know some of y'all sleep using in Philadelphia because nobody be more sleeping than me, so you better wake on up because I feel a heavy anointing. Leave here with your package. Leave here with your package. You can leave here with a testimony he stole, he killed, and he destroyed. Or you can leave here, Malika, with your package. I choose Zoe life, the God kind of life. And it's not hard. It's just a choice. It's not going to force it upon you. You're leaving here with your, yes, Lord. You're leaving here with Zoe life. Live. You're leaving here with hope. You're leaving here with what you lost and you got it back. You're leaving here with the goods, the deposits that God's put on the inside of you. Oh, yes, there's some people that have lost you, that have left your life forever for one reason or another. But that doesn't mean you don't have hope. My mother been gone. I wish she was here today. Though she's gone and I can't bring her back, I still have hope. You still have hope no matter what. Hold on to your hope your faith. Hold on to it and build. Climb your way back up. Hallelujah. Leave here. You're leaving here with your freedom. You're leaving here with your deliverance. You're leaving here with your breakthrough. Somebody lift your hands up and give God praise.